Have you ever wondered what smash factor is? Well, it's ball speed divided by club speed, but there's so much more that goes into it. Hey golfers, it's Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today I am joined by Jackie Johnson. Jackie is also a Master Club Fitter at the Second Swing Minnetonka store and we're going to be discussing Smash Factor. Smash Factor, it comes up a lot in fittings and people always comment on our YouTube channel about Smash Factor, whether it's with an irons or with a driver. Well, smash factor is ball speed divided by club speed, but there is a lot more that goes into it. So what really goes into smash factor? Yeah, there's a lot of different things that go into smash factor. Um, biggest one is obviously hit location of the club. That's gonna really optimize your smash factor no matter what club you're hitting. Um, other factors can be you know, face to path, attack angle, those things that can really impact uh, the efficiency of smash factor as well. Yeah, you said efficiency, and efficiency, it's transferring energy from the, you know, the, sp the speed that you generate from the club face to the ball is what we're trying to do. So we're trying to transfer as much energy to get that ball to come off the club face as fast as we can, especially with driver. One thing I want to bring up here is a lot of times we focus too much on smash factor. Ball speed is really where the money's at, especially when I focus on an iron fitting because a lot of people will say, well, your smash factor is too high or too low. It's a great way to find out whether you've been ill-fitted, essentially, or if your clubs are incorrect for you. Sometimes your smash factor can be too high. Sometimes your smash factor can be too low. A great example of too high of a smash factor is when I personally do game improvement testing. Well, notice if you take a look at that, that smash factor, I've hit some shots where I've got smash factors close to the, the high one fours, and that's just too high for a seven iron. And that's purely to do with the loft. So if you're fitted for the wrong loft on your golf club, there's a good chance that your smash factor may be off. It may be too high or too low. Uh, but simply, smash factor is ball speed divided by club speed. And we're going to talk about it a little today. We're, Jack and I are both going to hit some drives and we'll talk about the calculation. So Jackie, first swing there, that was a great start. So let's talk about calculation. So I mentioned smash factor is ball speed divided by club speed. So on that particular shot, your ball speed was 129.4. We divide that by 87.9, which is what your, your club speed was. We get a smash factor of 1.47. That's pretty good. That's very efficient. So that tells me you hit that probably pretty close to the middle of the club face. Yep. Oof, that was bad. Might get away with it, though. Eh. Yep. Yeah. So that last shot, uh, your reaction showed that you're like, oh, that was, that was bad. Yep. Well, we'll talk about that one a little bit. So your efficiency dropped. So you didn't quite catch it as close to the middle of the club face. We actually can bring that up here and show that you hit it slightly out on, way out on the toe side of the club. So you lost a little bit of ball speed and efficiency based on your club speed on that particular shot. You sounded pretty good. One, yep. four, seven. So on those, uh, those five shots, we had Three shots at 1.47 with your smash factor, one at 1.43, that was the one that was a little bit on the toe side, and then one at 1.46. So your average smash factor there was 1.46, 130.5 divided by 89.5 gave us that particular number there, so 1.46. Um, if you were in a club fitting, and just to say that smash factor was a little bit lower, say it was at 1.35 with the driver what would we try to do to improve that efficiency? Well, loft could be one thing. Um, so if you know, we're trying to get a little bit more ball speed, uh, lower the loft just a little bit. Right, would, yeah, would so say someone that. comes in, they've got a 12 degree driver yeah. and they're hitting it to the moon and the ball is spinning a lot. Absolutely, loft is going to dramatically increase the ball speed. Yeah, um, yeah sometimes also seeing like, uh, for me, when looking at smash factor, if, if someone's struggling to hit the center of the face, shaft is a huge thing as well. 
So sometimes they might have something that's too light or too heavy, uh, too you know stiff in the tip. And they need something a little softer, stuff like that that can really help hitting the location in the center of the face. Right, and I would also add in here too, um, when we talk a little bit, now when we're fitting, we're not going down the instruction route, but you mentioned earlier like face to path. So if someone's face angle or their club path is really far apart, say their club path is negative five, so they're swinging across, basically over the top five degrees, and their face angle is say two degrees open, their face to path is going to be seven degrees. Even if they catch it in the middle of the club face, they're doing a glancing blow with that face being open. Even if you catch it in the middle of the club face, your smash factor, there's no way it's going to be high because right. you're creating a lot of spin on the bowl and it's really just not as efficient as possibly could be. It's a little low on the face. Ooh, oh 1. boy. 1.42. Well, that first shot, Thomas, Smash factor at 1.42. Definitely a little lower than you'd probably like. So explain why that happened. Right. Uh, yeah, 1.42 is not very good for <laughs> me, uh, especially with driver. So my face angle and face to path was closed on that one. So the bull curved to the left, and my hit location, I got it pretty low on the face. If you bring out that hit location, you can get to see where I hit that shot on the face. So a little bit low. Because it was a little bit low, I was not getting as much energy transferred from the club face to the golf ball. Right. So 1.42, it's a pretty rough start for <laughs> me. Let's see if I can improve on that. All right. Might be a little higher. There, there we go. go. 1.48, better. So that particular shot is a little closer to the middle of the club face. Uh, it was actually just slightly high and in the middle. Um, my face angle on my club path, my face to path, were a lot closer together. So the bull naturally flew straighter, but also a combination of catching it in the middle was generated at 1.48. Yeah, that was a good one. So Thomas, looking at the averages of those five shots we both hit, you know, smash factor for both of us, 1.46 plus minus 0 0.02 for both of us as well, which is you know, pretty good. It's a so, tie. Yeah, it's a yep, tie. It's a tie, so yeah. So for calculation wise, my average bowl speed was 161.4, average club speed was 110.2, which gave me at 1.46. Well yours was 130.5, divide that by 89.5, also gave a 14.6. Um, so what else is another way to increase efficiency with regards to smash factor and bowl speed. Um, yeah, I think you know we brought you brought up a good point when you were hitting. Like, is the golf ball cracked or something like that? Um, I, I think golf ball is a huge factor in smash factor too. Uh, you know, there's some golf balls for me where I'm getting I'm getting more ball speed from a certain ball. Um, whether I'm hitting it straight or not, it might be one thing, but I can get certain, you know, ball speed numbers from certain golf balls because maybe they're a lower spinning ball, you know, the composition of it is just different compared to something else. So golf ball is, is huge. Yeah, and we, we do golf ball testing for a lot of our videos and I've noticed with my club speed when I have tested with what's considered a soft ball is the ball just hasn't come off with as much ball speed. It's just, I feel like the ball almost has kind of come off dead at times. Mm -hmm. And I've lost distance and I've lost my efficiency and, and ball speed because the ball, the compression of the ball is a little too slow for my swing speed. So it definitely is going to be influenced. I know a lot of people don't know, don't think so much it's the golf ball that's going to generate distance. Well, it's a huge important piece to it. And we've said it over and over, playing the same golf ball every single time is going to give you consistency, but also playing the right golf ball for you too is going to be really important. Um, one, other, one last thing I want to do here to finish up is just test the loft differences a little bit. So we we'll notice I was at 1.46 when I was testing my driver with 9 degrees. I just want to tweak the, the loft on this driver a little bit. Now I'm changing the, the hosel adjustments, mm -hmm. so I'll, I'll put it at minus 1 and I'll put it at plus 2. I'm just curious to see what happens to the ball speed and also that smash factor number when we do this. All right.
All right, so Thomas, not a huge difference, but about 0.1 difference in smash factor between your 9 degree and then plus 2 um, degrees on that driver head. Yeah, I lost a little bow speed. You can see I went from 161.4 to 160.3. Uh, so that related to a lower smash factor. So the smash factor, based on the efficiency there, was a little bit lower. Um, I also lost distance because I had more loft on, on the club there too. You can notice that board didn't roll out as, as far. Uh, I'm curious now if we now go to the minus one setting. So since we're dropping this by about three degrees of what it's at right now, I'm pretty certain that the efficiency is going to be higher at this setting. Let's check it out. There you go. Right in the middle. So my hypothesis was accurate there. Uh, the efficiency did go up when I had a little less loft on the golf club. I think that's just important to bring up is not so much by just changing the loft on this particular driver, but getting fitted for the wrong loft on your driver is going to influence smash factor. It's going to influence ball speed alone and the changes that can be done as, as well. Yeah, I think, you know, taking a look at all the numbers you got up there with, you know, nine degree and then you got it down to an eight and then obviously 11. Um, it's very noticeable that, I mean, clear cut right there on where, where you're at, you know. Uh, higher loft is just definitely not what you need. You know, you're at 1.45 in smash factor and too much spin. But yeah, I, I like the numbers on both, to be honest, but I think with the nine degree, you definitely had more control too. And I think that's, that's one of the things as well when we're fitting people. Smash factor is important, but it's not the end all be all because you can have a higher smash factor but be all over the board, right? Right, And where, you know, there's a certain loft that you might be a little bit lower, but you also might be that much more efficient on your swing. Right, and it can show a swing floor, or it can show that the club's being ill-fitted for a per person as well, because let's face it, if you hit that little pull, your club face is going to be more closed at impact. Generally speaking, if your club face is closed, you're having less loft on the, on the club, Yes, the smash factor is going to go up because you got more ball speed because you got less loft presented at impact, but it's not going to go where you want it to go. Right. So there's, there's too much to be said about smash factor and people chasing a high, high smash factor. If the ball's going straight, obviously that's, that's important. Um, but yeah, if, you're, if you are hitting the ball straight, if your numbers are looking good, so your path number's looking good, your attack angle's good, everything is nice and straight and good, and you have a very low efficiency rating, that's when you need to definitely get fit and come on and work with a fitter or even work with an instructor to figure out just why is my efficiency so far off, even if I'm hitting the middle of the face, I'm hitting it straight, that just tells you there's something wrong with the club you've been fitted for. And finally, the last thing that I'm talking about with Smash Factor, it can be the launch monitor you're using too. I've said time and time and over and over that TrackMan will pick up club speed slower than say Foresight will. Uh, with it being a radar based system, it's also, it's picking up club speed right at compression. While with say a Foresight GC Quad, what's gonna happen is it's picking up club speed right at impact or right before impact. That just that little bit of split second difference is going to cause the club speed to always be faster with a Foresight unit. So that's why I say come back to ball speed. Ball speed's more important than smash factor because if a launch monitor is picking up your club speed, say five miles an hour faster, but your ball speed going to be the same, let's face it, the ball speed's very, very consistent with regards to what, what machine you're using. That's where you're gonna see some differences. So if I was gonna divide, say, 163 divided by 111 on TrackMan, give me 1.47, if I then divide 163 divided by, say I got 115 mile an hour club speed with, uh, with Foresight, now that efficiency number is going to drop, probably, I don't know perfect math, but I'm gonna guess it's probably be around about 1.43 instead. So that's why it's important to focus more on ball speed, 
Smash factor can definitely be overlooked a lot. It is a simple calculation of ball speed divided by club speed, but club speed can definitely change depending on what launch monitor you're using as well. So if you want to learn more about smash factor, ball speed, club speed, come on in and get fit for any club. It can be irons, it could be driver, it could be wedges. Come on and get fit a second swing and we'd love to help you generate more energy from the club face to the golf ball. So you can hit much further shots and much straighter shots. I hope you enjoy this content. Subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for the next video.